Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about junctional escape rhythm. So let's get started. This is an abnormal rhythm that arises because the main pacemaker of the heart, known as the sinoatrial node, fails to work. It's either working way too slow or it's not working at all. So other pacemaker structures found in the AV junction of the heart start to take over. So these electrical structures help create, in a sense, an escape for the heart, which is why we call it junctional escape, because they are going to help the heart continue with its contractions since the SA node really isn't up for the task. Now the AV junction of the heart separates the atria from the ventricles, and it includes electrical structures like the AV node and the bundle of His. So to help us truly understand these Functional rhythms, let's quickly review what normal electrical conduction should look like in the heart whenever it creates that PQRST waveform on the ECG. The electrical conduction system starts in the SA node, known as the sinoatrial node. And this is found in the upper part of the right atrium. And it's the site for the main pacemaker, which causes your heart to beat at a rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute. So whenever the SA node fires, it sends electrical signals downward throughout those atria. And whenever it does this, this causes atrial depolarization, which leads to contraction of your atria. Now we can pick up this contraction of the atria on the ECG by looking at the P wave. That's what the P wave represents, your atria contracting. So the P wave should have these certain characteristics to it if the SA node is firing like it should. The P wave should be upright and there should be one in front of every QRS complex. Then after electrical signals leave the SA node, it goes down to the AV node. And this is really like the second pacemaker of the heart. It causes the heart to beat at about 40 to 60 beats per minute. And it has the nickname gatekeeper because what the AV node does is it causes a delay in electrical signaling so the atria can fully empty into the ventricles. Then once it leaves this spot, it goes down to the bundle of His, which is like our third pacemaker, and it causes the heart to beat at about 20 to 40 beats per minute. Then electrical signals go down through the bundle branches, we have right and left bundle branches, and to the Purkinje fibers. And then we get ventricle depolarization, so we get the contraction of those ventricles. Now whenever the ventricles contract, they are going to create the QRS complex. That represents ventricle depolarization. And then after that, since they've contracted, they now have to rest. So we're gonna have ventricle repolarization and the ventricles are so big that when they relax, they are gonna create the T wave. And then this process repeats itself over and over again. So what you wanna take away from this is how that ECG waveform should look and what certain parts should measure because you need that information whenever you're trying to analyze abnormal rhythms. So first thing you wanna make sure you have one P wave in front of one QRS complex, that P wave is upright. Then from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex is known as the PR interval. You always wanna measure this. And this should measure anywhere between point 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. And the PR interval is the delay in conduction by the AV node. Then you wanna take a look at that QRS complex. It should measure less than 0.12 seconds. And then you can look at the QT interval that starts at the beginning of the QRS complex to the end of the T wave. It can measure anywhere between 0.35 to 0.44 seconds. This really varies depending on gender and if your heart rate is fast or if it is slow. And then you wanna take a look at that T wave and make sure that it is upright and where it's supposed to be. So with that said, what is happening in the junctional escape rhythm? Well, we've already established our SA node isn't working very well or at all. So our structures in the AV junction take over like the AV node or the bundle of His. So the electrical signals are gonna leave the AV node and they're gonna travel nicely down through that ventricle, which is going to cause us to have a normal ventricular rate. It's going to lead to a normal QRS complex, QT interval, and T wave. All that's going to look fine. But we also have to have atrial depolarization. So what can happen in some cases is that that AV node can send the electrical signals upward to those 
atria and it's going to go retrograde because normally electrical signals should go down through the SA node and go downward through that atria. However, here it's going to go backwards in a sense and go up through those atria. And this is going to have a profound effect on our P wave. Therefore, here are some key characteristics about junctional escape. The first thing is that the rhythm is going to be regular. So when you measure from R wave to R wave, it's going to be the same distance. And then when you go to count the rate, the rate is going to be between 40 to 60 beats per minute. Now, whenever you look at the QRS complex, it's going to be narrow, less than 0.12 seconds. That QT interval is going to be in range and the T wave is going to be normal. Now, the biggest hallmark of this rhythm are its P waves and PR interval if it has one. So those P waves are a little bit peculiar. So whenever you're looking at your ECG, you're going to notice that in leads two, three and AVF, that P wave is going to be inverted, hence upside down. And then you're going to notice that the placement of the P waves can really vary with a junctional rhythm. So you can have a variety of placements. One way the P wave can be is that it could be concealed or hidden. It could be within that QRS complex. So you're looking at that rhythm. You're like, where's my P waves? Well, they're hidden within that QRS complex or the P waves could be behind the QRS complex, which should never happen. And if that happens, you know, we can't measure a PR interval. Or the P waves could be before the QRS complex, but whenever you take a closer look, you're gonna notice that those P waves are very close to the QRS complex, leading to an extremely short PR interval. So our PR interval can be short with this, less than 0.12 seconds. So to help you remember that information about that peculiar P wave in this rhythm, let's remember this little jingle. Inverted P on AVF two and three, before, after QRS, if you can see. Sometimes it hides and you can't see it at all. When it appears in the front, the PR interval is small. Now, what are some causes of junctional escape rhythm? Well, think back to the patho. We know we have damage to our SA node. So think of all the conditions that could really damage this SA node that causes the AV junction structures to take over. Well, if we have ischemia to our SA node, maybe through a myocardial infarction, it can damage it. Or if the patient has sick sinus syndrome, or if they're taking medications that could affect this node, maybe they become digoxin toxic, or they're taking beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, lithium that can do that, or if the patient's got inflammation of their myocardium or the lining of their heart. Now, one thing to remember is that this actually can be normal in some patients, such as people who are athletic or young, particularly during sleep. Now let's talk about our role as the nurse and the treatment for this rhythm. So as a nurse, we play a huge role with identifying this rhythm by analyzing the ECG. Then next, we want to assess our patients, see if they're having any signs and symptoms. And if they're not having signs and symptoms, which is the case with some patients, we wanna to continue to monitor them and no treatment is needed at this time. Now the signs and symptoms that we're looking for involve a low cardiac output because this heart rhythm runs between 40 to 60 beats per minute. Whenever we're starting to get less than 60 into the lower 50s, a lot of patients cannot tolerate a heart rate this slow. Our cardiac output falls. So we're looking for signs and symptoms like shortness of breath, low blood pressure, dizziness, chest pain, increased capillary refill, weak pulse. That's telling us that our patient is not perfusing very well. So if these signs and symptoms do appear, we want to activate the emergency response system in the place we're working, and we want to prepare the patient. Treatment involves treating the patient like patients who have symptomatic bradycardia, which we talked about in the previous ECG review. So of course you wanna look at those causes. What's causing this junctional escape rhythm? Is it medication? Well, remove the medication. Maybe they need an antidote, especially if they're on digoxin. And you wanna prepare some atropine. Atropine will help increase cardiac output by increasing that heart rate. And then some patients may need temporary pacing or a permanent pacemaker. Okay, so that wraps up this review on junctional escape. And don't forget to check out the other ECG videos in this series.